Hey guys, what is up? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be exploring the Cloverfield Paradox, the third installment in the Cloverfield franchise, which was released last month onto Netflix. Now, much like Cloverfield Lane, whose structure was based off of another film called The Cellar, Cloverfield Paradox was also based on another script that was reworked to tie into the overall Cloverfield lore. The initial script, which was titled The God Particle, featured a crew on board a space station dealing with technical difficulties, before it was acquired by Paramount Pictures and Bad Robot in 2012. The project was delayed several times and was released rather hastily last month with limited publicity. Now, the story is set on Earth in 2028, when the world is suffering from a global energy crisis, which leads the top space agencies of the world to test the Shepard Particle Accelerator aboard the orbiting Cloverfield Station, which is theorized to have the potential to provide Earth with an infinite supply of energy. There are some doubts among the scientific community about the mission, as shown through a news broadcast early on in the film, where a man named Mark Stambler, who is the author of a book titled The Cloverfield Paradox, expresses severe doubts and concerns about the space station, informing the viewers that the Shepard Accelerator was 1,000 times more powerful than any that had been built before it. He also insisted that every time they tested it, they risked opening the membrane of space-time, potentially smashing multiple dimensions together, which would essentially shatter reality as we knew it. Every time they tested, they risk ripping open the membrane of space-time. This experiment could unleash chaos, the likes of which we have never seen. Now, the scientists on board the Clover Station attempt to get the Shepard to work over two years to no avail, until they suddenly achieve what appears to be a stable beam of energy. However, the joy of success is cut short as the accelerator overloads, creating a power surge on the station, and it's not until after they are able to restore power that they discover the Earth has vanished from view, and the gyroscope that aided in the station's navigational abilities had also disappeared, sparking fear and distrust among the scientists, who are understandably rattled by the shock of seeing the planet disappear. As the crew begin repairing the ship to try and get back home, strange things begin to occur, including the mysterious arrival of a woman named Jensen, who is discovered fused with wires inside one of the panels. Volkov, who is the Russian engineer on board, also begins acting erratically, as his body begins to undergo internal changes, leading him to craft a 3D gun to deal with his increasing paranoia and distrust of his workmates, whom he suspects are responsible for all that has gone wrong. Unfortunately for Volkov, the worms that the scientists had been testing somehow got into his body through unexplained means, causing them to burst out of him. Mundy, on the other hand, played by the hilarious Chris O'Dowd from the IT crowd, is also not immune to the strange happenings, as his hand mysteriously disappears behind a panel he'd been working on. They soon find the limb roaming on its own, and discover it's trying to communicate with them, writing down instructions for them to cut Volkov open. Once they do this, they find the missing gyroscope, which enables them to locate the Earth and restore partial communications. And much to their shock, the transmissions they begin to receive notify them that the Cloverfield Station had been destroyed in space before falling back down to Earth. All this with nations still reeling after the destruction of the Cloverfield Space Station. Losing its brave crew of six, debris from the Cloverfield has crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. Jensen, the woman who was mysteriously found on the ship, is soon discovered to be a member of the Shepard Station in the parallel universe that they just arrived in, where the station had crashed back to Earth. Desperate to restore some semblance of order and hope on her Earth, she betrays the crew and begins taking them down before she's inevitably stopped. The remaining crew members, Schmidt and Hamilton, are able to send a message to Jensen's Earth filled with data about the accelerator and all that had happened to them in the hope that it would somehow help, before they both inevitably return back to their universe and their own Earth, only to find that it too had monsters that had entered from another dimension. Now, what had essentially happened was that Stambler's theory was correct. The crew aboard the Cloverfield Station had entered another strand of the multiverse, releasing monsters from a fourth dimension, which then terrorized all three of the Cloverfield timelines. This ties all three films together by explaining that the Clover seen in Cloverfield, the alien seen in 10 Cloverfield Lane, and the creatures released in this film were all a direct result of the Shepard Station Accelerator. Although the Cloverfield Paradox is set several years after the preceding films in the series, the events in all three films smash together across each of the multiple dimensions, fusing across both space and time. This is in essence responsible for everything that we see from the arrival of Jensen, the disappearance of Mundy's arm, to the release of the monsters themselves. 
Each of these things occur at random points in different years across multiple universes, which essentially gives J.J. Abrams creative license to do whatever he wants in the future, as shown with his plan for the fourth film which has been titled Overlord. The film, which is planned to be released in 2019, is set in World War II on the eve of D-Day, with American paratroopers who encounter supernatural forces in their campaign. Now, it's still early days, so the plot could potentially change, especially if JJ finds another script that he likes and wishes to rewrite. But the cause for the events of that film will undoubtedly be the events witnessed in the Cloverfield Paradox. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the Cloverfield Paradox. If there's anything else you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. It isn't there. The frequency for mission control? The Earth. Guys, the systems are scrambled. The entire Earth is not gone. Cycle the external cameras.